investment fraud jumped to a 10 year high last year, costing investors over three and a quarter billion dollars. And that's just the scams that got caught. In this video, I'll show you how these scammers work, the biggest warning signs, and what to do to save your money. We're talking Ponzi schemes and investing scams today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to all you in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, this is gonna be like a public service announcement, but one that could save you $867,000. According to the SEC Enforcement Division, that's the average loss for an investor caught in a Ponzi scheme with some losing into the billions of dollars. And the reason I pushed back two other videos to do this one right now is because the SEC just reported Ponzi schemes and other investment frauds hit a 10 year high last year. State and federal authorities uncovered 60 major investment scams in 2019 with total investor losses of three and a quarter billion dollars. It was a decade high and twice the amount found the year before. And that's just the cases they found. This is just the tip of the iceberg nation and I have a feeling investment fraud is going to go full blown epidemic over the next few years. First is because those 2019 scams, those were found in a decrease of cases actually opened. Reduced manpower led the SEC to open 827 cases last year. That's down 5% from the prior year. That's going to be a green light for scammers that they're less likely to get caught. Another reason why it's so dangerous right now is where the market's at. We're coming off a year of 30% market returns, but most likely looking at single digit returns at best this year. Investors have that FOMO, that fear of missing out that they didn't get that 30% last year and they're going to be expecting it this year. That makes them a perfect target for scammers and schemers. So in this video, we're working on some armor plated protection for the Bowtie Nation. I'll show you how these scammers work and some of the scams that you might encounter. We'll look at the most famous Ponzi scheme in history to see how Bernie Madoff got caught. Then I'll reveal five must know warning signs of an investment fraud and exactly what to do if you think you're being scammed. I'm going to cover everything you need to know about investment scams so you can spot these frauds before they happen to you. But I want you to do me a favor. If you ever run into someone trying to pull a scam, do me a favor and kick them square in the nuts because these are the lowest of the low. That same SEC report found the majority of scams target retirees living on a fixed income and 70% of victims were referred to the scammer by a family member or a friend. These people feed off your trust. They drain your bank accounts no matter how much you need that money. So first, let's look at how these scammers work. Then I'll highlight the four most common types of investment fraud. Now, some of these are going to be warning signs as well as how the scammers try to con you, but they all tend to play from the same book. They'll all either reach out through an unsolicited phone call or an email, or they'll get one of their other victims to make that connection. So when that friend of yours brags that he's making double digit returns with no risks and asks you if you want to meet his guy, just say no. Now, a lot of times these investment scams will offer you a free meal or a seminar, basically anything to get you to come down to the office and listen to that pitch. They'll use a lot of jargon and complicated explanations, making you think that they've found that hidden secret to beat the market. This is all very high pressure and they'll want you to sign immediately. No sleeping on it, no talking to your wife or looking into it. Time is these scammers worst enemy. They need to get as many people as possible, get their money and get out of town before they're caught. Now pyramid schemes and Ponzi scams are what you hear about most in the news. Uh, these two are very similar, but have one very important difference. In a pyramid scheme, new people, so investors or sellers, they're expected to bring in more people on their own. The scammers know that all they need to do is get each new person to bring in two more and get those two to bring in two more and just keep it going. New money coming in goes to the scammers with just enough to some of those older participants to keep everyone thinking this is a legit business. Of course, the most common examples here are these multi-level marketing companies or MLMs. Yeah, I know these can be semi-legit businesses, but when your whole business model is relying on that trust of family and friends to buy your products, that's shady at best. Most of these MLM companies charge way more than similar products, plus they charge a membership fee to be part of the program. Now a Ponzi scheme on the other hand is where the scammer is primarily the one bringing in new people. This is where we see most of the investment frauds out there. Uh, other victims might make a referral, but it's mostly the scammer doing the talking. This is what the $65 billion Bernie Madoff scam was, a Ponzi scheme. From as early as 1960, Madoff ran his scheme collecting billions from investment advisors and pension funds and promising easy returns. The Madoff fund was showing 1 and 2% monthly returns with almost no down months, so naturally people just never asked to withdraw their money. Problem was, he wasn't investing that money. 
the few redemptions he got were easily met with new money coming in. And there was actually a financial specialist, Harry Markopoulos, that discovered the scam as far back as 1999. This is when his boss asked him to cre create a fund to mimic Madoff's returns. Just looking at the chart of returns, he knew there was something off. Madoff's returns were just so consistent without even a hiccup whether the market jumped or crashed. Markopoulos went to the SEC with evidence twice in 2001 and in 2005, but was ignored both times. So rule number one here, don't expect the government is going to catch these investment scams before they get to you. It was actually the Great Recession that brought Madoff down, and the next recession is when I think we're going to see an explosion in these new scams. The problem is for the scammers is that investors panic or, or need to withdraw their money to cover bills in a recession, so they call their manager for a redemption. At one point, Madoff needed to deposit over a billion dollars in client accounts over two days just to cover those res redemption calls. There was no money coming in, and the whole scam just came crashing down. So when this decade-long bull market finally turns over, when the scammers aren't easily able to find that new money to cover the old and they get that wave of withdrawals, that's when we're going to see the news blow up again with these scams. Now, lately, we've also seen a rise in Bitcoin scams, with the two most common being fake exchanges and fake coins. For example, the millions lost by South Koreans duped into investing in the fake BitKRX exchange in 2017, or the $6 million scammed by my Bitcoin just last year. Now, our last scam before we get to those warning signs and what to do if you think you're being scammed, this one's called the pump and dump. This is where the scammer buys shares in a small, thinly traded company. So we're talking a penny stock, usually less than 20 million market cap and less than 50,000 shares traded on a daily basis. So we'll use $9 million Marin here as an example. Now understand, I'm not saying Marin is anything but a good company, but this would be the perfect target for a pump and dump because, because it's just 26,000 shares traded on average and a price of $1.35 means that just $35,000 is traded a day. So what the scammers will do, they'll buy up tens of thousands in these shares, and then for like a week, they'll spread false information about the company on the internet. The trading they did probably pushed the shares a little higher, so they'll point to that momentum and then tell people some bullshit about a new patent breakthrough or a drug that hasn't been reported yet. Of course, this all gets investors salivating and jumping into the shares. And when you've got a stock this small, just 35 grand traded on average each day, you get investors pouring in hundreds of thousands into it over a day or two and the shares rocket higher. That's when the scammers sell their shares. But when that artificial pump machine stops feeding fake news into the market, people stop buying the shares and they just crash back down. Nation, this is one you really have to be careful with, especially here on YouTube. I get emails regularly asking me to join a so-called investor network to promote stock picks found by the company's analysts. And these really are just pump and dump schemes trying to get YouTubers to talk about a stock. So you've got those main types of scams and a lot of those warning signs should already be obvious, but now I want to reveal five warning signs that are almost a sure bet for a scam. First is any kind of a guaranteed rate of return. Now technically the only investment that's guaranteed is the US Treasury bond. And yes, I know all the preppers are going to say the US government is bankrupt, but, but it's still pretty much considered the risk-free investment. Now, beyond that, there are some investments that promise that rate of return, like some annuities or cash insurance contracts, but these are guaranteeing less than a 5% return, so not the kind of thing we're talking about. No, I'm talking about investments, funds, advisors, anyone telling you they can earn you a 15% return every year. We're talking anyone that shows you a graph that looks like Madoff's, where the returns are almost completely smooth even when the market tanks. Honestly, Bill Miller produced a 16% annualized return for the Leg Mason Fund for 15 years to 2005, and he's basically an investing god. If the guy calling you up that sounds like he's just discovered puberty is producing those kinds of returns, the market would know about it. Our next warning sign of an investment scam is going to be related to that. It's those overly consistent returns and the promise of no risk. Remember, these scammers love to make you think they've found the holy grail of investing. Somehow they've cracked the code when all those MIT eggheads couldn't and they know how to beat the market risk-free. Again, all you have to do is compare their returns with a graph of the stock market. Now there are investments that can be smoother, but you're still going to see some peaks and valleys around those big stock crashes. Our third warning sign are those seminars, free meals, and travel to sell you into the investment. Really? If it was such a great investment, why are you selling it over the value menu at Denny's? Real investment managers don't need to give away these freebies to get you in the door. In fact, this really goes for anything that someone's trying to sell you, right? If that timeshare was any good, the developers wouldn't have to turn it into a timeshare. Another warning sign, and this is more if you've already invested, is that static account value. Now, what I mean here is your account value keeps going up, or, or even if it's flat when the market's tumbling. Now, again, a fund can beat the market or just not lose as much as stocks, but to not suffer at all, the fund manager better be able to explain that. Hell, you'd think they'd be jumping to explain it on CNBC or to anyone else that'll listen. 
If your investment manager is supposedly beating the market by a long shot, especially in a down market, and it's still a secret, you could already be a victim. Finally here, before we get to ways to check your investments for a scam, another big warning sign is a broker asking for a check payable to them. Checks should always be made out to your account custodian. That's the investment firm or the bank where the money is being held. Brokers don't hold your money, and even their investment company, they're usually not the actual company holding that money, not the legit ones anyway. Now let's talk about what you do if you think you're a victim of investment fraud already, or maybe you just wanna check out your advisor before investing. First is you can call up the custodian of the assets. Again, this is usually a very large investment firm or a bank, and legit brokers and managers hold your money with that custodian and then make trades through the platform. Call up the custodian, verify that you have an account, and ask for the balance. You can also check with the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, that's FINRA, and it's the main regulator over brokers. FINRA runs a database called BrokerCheck that shows broker registrations as well as any prior disciplinary complaints, so it's a great way to get the lowdown on your broker. Many brokers and managers will also have to register with your state securities or your insurance regulator if they want to sell investments. You can find your state regulator through investor.gov. You can also check with the SEC itself at sec.gov and use its Edgar database where companies and investments are registered. Now, not every investment is required to register here, but most are, so you should be able to find the company. To report an investment fraud, the Federal Trade Commission, the SEC, and the FBI all manage these cases, so it's always best to shout as loud as you can to as many that'll listen. These scammers are scum, and it's on all of us to make sure they don't get away with it. Click on the video to the right for the biggest warning signs of a dividend in danger. I'll show you five risks to the dividend stocks and when to get out. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.